What's up, ladies and gentlemen? BC here. Welcome back to another episode. So today I want to talk a little bit more around your mind and how to improve your day-to-day. We'll talk about focus. We'll talk about mental clarity. We'll, we're going to talk a lot about some of these things. And um, it's just recently been inspired by, you know, the questions that I get and me being able now to compare myself now to like 10 years ago and how I dealt with some of those same problems that I'm getting as questions and some of the steps that I've taken to get to where I'm at now, even here in my office, right? We moved back to the regular setup here in the B16 office here in Miami. And I'm even looking at the wall and I have a Bruce Lee poster that's still up. This says empty your mind, be formless, be shapeless like water, right? So what I want to focus on for this first point is the first three words of that poster, which is empty your mind. And what it means by empty your mind is typically it's difficult for people to I would say empty their mind in quotes, because you're not literally emptying your mind. What you're doing is you're removing conflicts in your mind that allow you to now be formless and shapeless and just move, right? What happens is the movement of the mind gets impeded by conflicts, right? What I mean by conflicts is conflicting ideas in the mind. Case in point, most people have conflicting ideas and things in their mind about everything, How do I know this? Well, look at the average person in their existence. Look at me years ago, and I'm still ridding myself of some, right, 10 years later. But it's very simple. Let's say you choose to do something, right, career-wise. You want to be an entrepreneur. Well, traditional advice, probably your parents, your family, the people around you, even now when it's cool to be an entrepreneur, that classic traditional, in quotes, advice or what people say, opinions, whatever you want to call them, are the antithesis of that. Right? So you have your own genuine desire, and then you have, oh, you got to have a backup plan. Well, oh, just get a job. Oh, you got to get a degree. Oh, you're not going to go to college, right? That's just one simple example that most people can relate to that immediately causes a conflict. Why? Because unless you're the type of person who's already so solid right, with their ideas, beliefs, philosophies, and ideals where you operate solely on that, Even if you're 1% still on the other side, 10%, 20%, you're stuck in the middle, that creates conflict in the mind. And when you create conflict in the mind, you cut off that flow and it cannot keep going. It stops, right? It's being tugged like a tug of war back and forth, right? And that binds you to inaction. That eliminates and temporarily stalls the mind so it cannot work efficiently, therefore stopping you. And when you have these, these, these conflicting ideas and things in your mind, you can't operate. However, because we're not aware of that mechanism that I just said and how to resolve it, what do we do? Well, we simply give and we try to rationalize this moment and this thing that we're dealing with, with the traditional stuff. I'm not motivated. I'm not feeling it, right? All the surface level manifestations of this core issue now become the excuse, And it's not the problem. It's a symptom of the real problem, right? So what are some simple things you can do? Well, I would say for you, you need to become an architect of your mind. You need to become an architect and designer and and controller and head engineer of your mind, your beliefs, and your thought processes and all that. So this is something you can do. Let's say, let's go back to that first example. Hey, I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to start a business. Okay? Get a piece of paper, draw a line down the middle. I want this, okay? This is what I believe. I think I'm going to do well. I want to make six figures. And on the opposite side, think of the other things that are floating around in your mind or advice and quotes that other people have given you. I want you to do that right now, okay? If not, then make a note and do this later as soon as you get home or out of your car or when you can do this. I want you to do this. Not type it, not put it on your phone. Get a pencil, a pen, a piece of paper and do this, okay? Now, I want you to look at that and ask yourself a set of questions and I'm going to give you a big one at the end that will help you tremendously. So you look and say, okay, which one do I believe? Is it rooted in fact? What are my genuine desires as a human being? These are a few. And go through the whole list, right? Try to figure out who told me this? Where did I hear this? Do I know this for a fact, right? And analyze all these things that are in the depths of your subconscious mind. Where is it coming from? Okay? You'll start to realize very quickly that some of these will dissolve on both sides because you can't even trace where they came from. You just might have heard it out of the blue sometime. Okay, But this is the prevailing datum that I want you to run with. Okay, If you look at both sides of the sheet based on your life, what you want to do, and where you want to go, right? because we can't have both set of, of beliefs and ideals because they conflict, right? and then you're stuck. If you had to choose one, 
if you had to pick and guess, just roll with this, which one's going to be more desirable for you and the future that you want? Which set of ideals is going to get you closer to the type of life that you're proud of, that you're happy with, that you're fulfilled with? If you had to choose, which set would you go with? Additionally, if that doesn't crack the code for you, okay, I want you, let's say that doesn't work for you. You tell me, Brian, it's not working for me. Well, I want you to try as an experiment to ditch the opposite side, these opinions and this other advice, and go with what you said. Just try it for a week. I want you to live as if all those things were true for one week and then come back and reassess, okay? So you have two things there that you can work with, two datums, two techniques, two uh, processes for the mind that will help you with this. Because that last one, just you know, go, going with, with these things for a week, it's an experiment. It's a game. It's the test to see the veracity of what I'm talking about to see if it's true. Okay? And I want you to act as if. Act as if you can't be an entrepreneur. There's no opposition. This is what I want, right? And just roll with it for one week, just seven days. And give it your all. And then come back and assess and say, I've been living with this conflict. I now chose to go 100% on this side. Does this make sense? Do I want to adopt these things as my prevailing beliefs and philosophies and more into my identity in order to get where I want to go, accomplish the things that I want to accomplish, and become the person that I want to become? Is that working for me? How was it? Right? And you assess it. We're now using the power of our mind and our intellect and the processing power of your mind right, to literally reshape your beliefs and philosophies and identity because that's the core of the individual. Everybody talking about thoughts, ideas, actions, that's the surface level. All those changes at that level are temporary. We need to get down to the nitty gritty, right? The, the clay that molds. That's the beliefs, philosophies, and identity, right? Values, beliefs, identity, right? That's the core of it, okay? Then try that. I want you to try that. Then you can come back and let me know, right, on the podcast uh, comment section or Instagram or YouTube or wherever you follow me, right? And by the way, if you still follow me on YouTube, I'm back permanently on Brian Casella 2.0, the channel with like 3,000 subscribers, 2,500, whatever it's at, because the first one is just, it, I think it's literally hanging by a thread with monetization. They keep stripping it away and it's just done, right? So we're moving over. Fuck it. And I want you to do that, right? So why is this so important? Because if you don't do this analysis and these exercises and this work, you will literally have a conflict about everything, right? Like as an example, let's say I'm going to fight and get into a boxing match, right? If I want to maximize my technique, but on the other side, I have an ideal that even with, within the ring, in a competitive standpoint, I still have the thought, well, I don't want to hurt anybody. Well, I'm not going to be a good fighter, right? I at least, even if I have that thought as a moral human being, need to understand that in the ring, when I'm actually going to go in a fight, for the sake of competition, to do this correctly and fight to my potential, I need to remove that out of my mind and be able to go with it and say, I'm going to win. Because in this context of this, of this contest, I can't have that conflict. Otherwise, I'll hold back. I won't perform to my best. Right? I believe that what I just described in basketball is ultimately what held me back. And I made it far. Never made it basically one step below the NBA. But I think what I just described in a different context of basketball is what held me back. I held myself back. I always wondered why. And now, with the development that I've done as a human being, I know if I was able to take this and go back you know, 10, 15, 20 years when I was playing basketball, I believe I would have made it farther. Maybe I'd be playing basketball on TV right now and I wouldn't be doing this stuff or in business. I don't know. But in my mind, it has such a significant impact, it probably could have altered my reality tremendously. See, but now I'm doing the work that I didn't do prior to 10 years ago when I was 27, okay? But this is what you have, like, you have to understand what, you might have to listen to this a couple times to really get it, because this is mental. When I talk mindset, when I talk developing the human being, molding their intelligence, this is what I'm talking about on this podcast. This is what allows you now to use this higher level ability to think and rationalize and, and assess. You now take it into any field, any part of your life, and you have success because this is building, right, the, the, the core building blocks of your mind and your ability to be intelligent and articulate, right? and process and think. I mean, it's cool. This is the basic kind of, you know, information and software of the mind. And if you develop this, you'll be a beast in everything that you do, right? But understand the concept. You might have to listen again, but that's what I'm talking about when I, I, I believe when I'm 
specifically describing removing the conflict so you can flow more, right? You block the flow of the mind. Think of a current, like an electrical current. The moment the current stops, you don't have electricity. It has to be free flowing. That's how the mind is. When you have a conflict, it stops the flow of your mind because we are electric beings as well, right? That's why when you when your heart stops, what do they do? They hit you with electricity, right? I mean, we're what, 80% water? Makes sense. Same thing with water. It flows, it's good, it's clean, full of minerals, the moment it stops and it stagnates, what happens? Disease breeds, mosquitoes come, insects come, it dies. Think of your mind as the same way and look at removing conflict and conflicting ideals and things, right? As a way to free up that flow and have more brain power and more efficiency. Because what's tied to this too is a lot of people say, well, man, I have an inability to focus. Well, believe it or not, aside from focus exercises, this is huge in helping you with your focus. If you have conflicting ideals, your mind's all over the place. It cannot focus on one thing or one outcome. It's stuck up here. Thinking, thinking, ah, daydreaming, lost. You do this. I guarantee you it will immediately have a tremendous effect on your ability to focus. For sure. A thousand percent. I will put my money on it. I want you to try this for yourself. I guarantee you it's going to have a, a, a big significant bump in your ability to focus. For sure. For sure. For sure. Okay? So, as you start to do this, you also clean up your, your bank and your beliefs and philosophies become more instilled that you become stronger, more entrenched. You can hold your position, right? You're less susceptible to be manipulated, right? You have more confidence. You become a better communicator. Your mind starts working more efficiently. Your emotions get better in check. I mean, it's just endless the amount of possibilities and improvements and developments that you'll have in evolution as a human being if you do this simple exercise that I gave you at the beginning of the podcast. It's really that simple. Okay, so learn to remove the conflicts in your mind. Do these exercises. This is real personal and self-development, not the fluff, not motivation, not that rah-rah bullshit, right? And it's so misunderstood. That's why I can't stand when somebody will listen to a podcast like this and say, oh, it's great motivation or it's just motivation. It's not fucking motivation, dude. Just because your mind isn't intellectual enough to, to understand what I just said and actually do the work doesn't mean that it's just fucking motivation. Grow up, okay? Be an adult, use your mind, be mature, and start to use some of these tools to your advantage, right? Otherwise, you're going to be stuck. That's why people keep getting stuck in this hamster wheel of personal development, and all they're doing is listening to motivational shit, and they're not getting anywhere. Why is it that I can read a book and it changes my life, and the next person reads it and gets nothing from it? It's the instrument reading the book. It's the person. It's not the information. Okay, so with that said, I'll end it here. I appreciate you guys listening. Thumbs up. If you listen to the podcast, share it, leave a review. Really appreciate all the support over the years. A couple things. This Sunday coming up, this next Sunday, we just did one the 31st, right, or the 30th of July. One week from this last Sunday, I'm doing another webinar for real estate agents, right? So keep a lookout in the description for the link to that to register. Also keep a lookout on my YouTube channel and Facebook and Instagram and everywhere else that we'll be sharing it for the whole week leading up to Sunday. We had a great attendance for that last minute webinar um, this previous Sunday, and I really wanted to do another one. I'm I'm recently more inspired to teach more and teach more and teach more and travel more and speak. It's really been um, amazing to see the results that people are getting, okay? If you guys want to reach out to us, you can schedule a strategy call. I have that link everywhere. If you want to check out my coaching and programs, you can do it through that strategy call link as well, or you're welcome to go to my most recent Facebook or Instagram post especially Instagram, and go to the comment section and type help. Then we will reach out to you and we'll start the conversation. Okay, that's it for this one, guys. We'll see you on the next one. Peace.